Um, okay, so I'm just going to start with my thank yous to everybody. <laughs> and um, Debbie said I'm not allowed to write a whole camp letter home, so. <laughs> Well, now um, you can do whatever the heck you want. <laughs> um, I just want to talk about um, the saying, it takes a village, because my friends and I take that saying pretty literally, and we pretty much raise each other's children, and we cry on each other's shoulders, and we support each other through thick and thin, through everything, and I am blessed to have a circle of people that some I've had since the day I was born, who traveled here from Sweden to be here, and all my best friends from middle school and high school that I've had my whole entire life, and everybody came together. I called in every favor to make this bar mitzvah happen. I mean, my high school friends are DJing, and my neighbor's sister is a photographer, and, um, Everybody that's here, um, my dad and Shar came and said, we'll handle all of the decor and all of the setup. And a week later, they had an entire bedroom full of camp everything. And my uncle Richard, who when Carson was probably born, said, well, if he has a bar mitzvah one day, I'll help with it. And we had to, of course, make good on that offer because it happened. And my mom, my sister, my friends that were here for days shopping with me and making me list after list of everything so that I wouldn't forget because I forget everything. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't be more blessed to have the people that I have in this room. And Tony, um, you know, we, we were an interfaith parents and I knew a Fermento was not in your wheelhouse, but from the very day that it was thrown at you, you were on board 100%, and you have been the most supportive, incredible dad. And I just want to thank you and everybody here. on Tuesday and said, Mom, why are you stressing about a speech? What could you possibly say to me that I don't already know? You think you need to tell me how much you love me? Or how hard we both work to make this happen? You don't. Stop thinking about it. I already know. And he's right. Every parent stands up and says the same things when it's time for a speech. My child is the greatest. My child is the kindest. My child is the most empathetic, the most giving, the most genuine, the brightest, the sincerest, the most sensitive, the most talented. <laughs> and while Carson is all of those things, all of our kids are all of those things. Because we dreamt about you our entire lives, and when you were born healthy and placed in our arms, every single dream came true. Carson, you are my dreams, my hopes, my inspiration, and my heart that walks outside of my body. I couldn't be prouder of the boy you are and the man you are becoming, so instead of reading a four-page speech, your Aunt Lisa and I are going to sing you a song instead. Yeah. There are some lyric sheets in your program. Lyric sheets in the program. And there's some more on the table over there for the first one. So. You might be asked to sing along the last verse.
Papa's uh, ukulele that I'm using today uh, to uh, help us uh, do this song. The last paragraph, you, you have the lyrics, and you can sing along anytime. The last paragraph is, um, is up to everybody, too. And I have to say one more thing. All this doing is an interlude. Oh, perfect. So my aunt sings. I, I don't. <laughs> but I, I, if you can fangirl your own aunt, I don't even know if that's a thing, but I've been fangirling my own aunt since I was like born and listening to her records over and over and over until that they couldn't play any longer. So like to sing with my aunt is like singing with a celebrity to me. So. Are we ready? You are my baby, but it's not up to me. What you become, that is up to you. I hope you will be gentle, kind, compassionate, and free. No matter what, I'll always love you unconditionally. No matter Everybody. Everybody. 